Okay, well, I'm really glad that you guys um, could come. Let me see if I can find an agenda link. This is crazy. For some reason, this only this document will not open in Google for me. Somebody on here that's smarter than me. I don't know. I can open it in Firefox. I can open it, but it won't open in Google. Um, I don't know what is going on. All right, I'm just gonna share my screen. <clears throat> Does anybody need the link? All right, um, we're gonna kind of jump around because I have asked a couple of members um, from the NIDA board to come talk about their um, administrative strand or, or conference that they're planning at NIDA. And um, so if you haven't been to NIDA before, maybe you weren't getting those emails um, from them. So I really wanted them to take a little time just to explain it. So we'll start with that. And then um, if you have questions for them, I told them nothing formal, just you know, a few minutes and you guys can ask questions. Um, and I can stop share so we can see everybody. So I'll let yeah. Julie, Paul, Crystal, whoever wants to, to start and talk about that. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in and start. Thank you so much, Molly, for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Julie. I am the executive director for NIDA. And I have a few board members here with me, Crystal, Ernst, and Paul Ingrant. So they're gonna help me out with um, some of the details as they have been heavily involved in planning this NIDA Leadership Summit. Um, it's good to see some familiar faces here. Um, so thank you for the work you do. I know it can never be said enough, especially these last couple of years. So thank you as an administrators for the work that you do. Um, hopefully you're familiar with NIDA. If not, uh, we're a nonprofit organization. Um, our vision is to champion innovative practices for all. And one way that we're able to do that is to hold events. Um, again, I hope you're familiar with either our fall event or our larger spring event, but Molly so graciously asked us to come today to share about a little bit more about our spring event. And within that spring event, we have implemented a leadership summit for, for leaders just as you. Um, the work is hard that you guys do, and we wanted to provide an opportunity for you to continue your growth and your learning and to collaborate with one another. And so, um, this year's Leadership Summit uh, is going to be two days. Um, the format in the passage has previously really been one. So we're excited about the expansion and that opportunity. And I'm just going to walk you quickly through the schedule and then um, let you guys ask some questions because we would love for you to be able to join, join us at um, this event. So on Thursday um, of the conference, which I guess I should tell you when it is, that would be helpful. This year is going to be in April, April 21st and 22nd at CHA Health Center Omaha. And on Thursday, we are including the keynote and as part of the leadership summit this year. And so our Thursday keynote is John Cook, the um, Nebraska women's volleyball head coach. And then after that keynote, you will dive into a full day of learning with Tom Murray. And if you are not familiar with Tom, we have asked him to come speak with you at the Leadership Summit. And he serves as the Director of Innovation for Future Ready Schools. Um, he's also a former administrator. So we're really excited to get his perspective, his positive attitude. Um, and some of the things that you'll look at during that day is you'll be able to walk away with over 100 free practical resources that he's going to share with you. He's going to give you time to reflect on your own leadership and what aspects that help or hinder you in that process. Um, explore ways to create cultures of innovation and risk taking. You're going to look through a framework and identify practical ways to make learning personal and authentic and identify issues related to Just equity like and access an and opportunity. Is she having trouble across the board? And uh, I mean, is she? I mean, sorry, just worry about her. She's still in two classes. Are we good? I'm good. Mr. Wick, I'm good. Your microphone is on, Mr. Wick. Oh, I'm sorry. Now everyone's muted. Julie, you're still muted. I'm muted, thank you. <laughs> um, so I was gonna say, we're, we're really excited giving you time to make connections with vendors and with each other. And that's really the focus of that day. And then on Thursday, uh, Crystal and Paul have planned some really, or Friday, excuse me, April 22nd, Crystal and Paul have planned some really cool things. So again, you're able to 
participate in our general session and keynote with all of our attendees. And then um, it's a kind of a build your own Tuesday. And so we're pretty excited about that. You can look uh, at any of our session offerings on the schedule for Friday. Um, we have the do space coming in, bringing some innovative things that are happening uh, just at their center. So you can be aware of, um, you know, kind of what's what's going around and, and what opportunities students will have in the future. Um, and then in the afternoon on Friday, again, you can choose from any of the sessions on the conference schedule. Um, Tom Murray will still be here as a featured speaker for us on that Friday. Um, we have Cameron Hudson lined up to also give some administrative sessions. Um, and then we have an offsite visit um, at IP Designs, which is optional that an attendee can go to as well. So I, I know I'm just really long winded there. Um, what questions can I answer? Julie, who did you say on that second day besides Thomas Murray? I didn't catch his name. Cameron Hudson, the, the principal at High Plains. And there's sessions on cybersecurity. Um, we have someone coming in from, from PTAC to give some information on FERPA, which is not always the most fun topic. You probably cringe when I say it, but important <laughs> if you're in need of those resources too. And the um, uh, field trip or the visit, tell us a little bit about what 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 is that? Yeah, I'll jump yeah. in on Please, that. Paul. Um, so IP design uh, group or Alvine Associates is an engineering um technology so we i'm with westside community schools i've been there 24 years and um, they are the folks that do our technology standard classroom as far as av stuff lighting sound um etc controls and so we worked with them to, to create our standard and then when we do renovations or new construction that's our pattern that we follow for classrooms. So they're um, engineering design architecture type thing. And fortunately, they have a new building that is just a couple blocks away from CHI. And I've been on their tour a couple of times. And it's just fun to see all the different things that they've incorporated technologically into their design of their building as far as window controls and lighting and energy efficiency and you know, cool coffee machines and all kinds of things. So it's 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 a fun little tour. So and it's really close to the conference. So that's why it was so convenient. Thanks, Paul. Any other questions for him? Maybe tell them how to get registered if they're not getting your emails. Sure. Um it is part of the regular, and when I say that, just I'm going to put the link in the chat there if you are interested. Um, it, you would go through the registration process and then on the page where it's, you can, uh, um, gives the different options like one day, two day conference, there's also a leadership summit option. And so if you're interested in that, you would just select leadership summit. Any questions for him? I really like that they've done this because um, a lot of time we know that NIDA has been wonderful for teachers and it's just targeting another audience and um, there's not always something for you guys um, everywhere. So appreciate that. And I appreciate you guys stopping in um, okay. to visit with us. Well, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. And again, all the work that you all are doing um, just can't be emphasized enough. So thank you. All right. All right, you guys are welcome great to stay, day. but we know you're busy, so you're probably going <laughs> to pop off, so thank you. So Everyone well. have a good day. Thanks. All right. I didn't know if everyone was aware of that, but I just thought it was a really great opportunity. We know they've done great things with NIDA in the past, and this is the second year they've tried to um, do something for administrators, so I like that. All right, let's go back up. Um, just a question I have um, that I want you to think about and um, jump in and answer if you want is, what's something that's on your plate that worries you and you could use support right now before the, at the end of the year? You know, Is there something, some way that might be unique that we could be supporting you right now? Or you just wanna figure out how other people are doing it?
Hey, this is Cody from West Holt. Um, we're looking for a band teacher right now. So if anybody has any leads, that would be beneficial. We've had it out for about three weeks and I've had zero applications so far. So if anybody has any leads or knows of a band teacher looking, send them our way. Are there staffing issues maybe that people are writing into not getting a lot of um, applicants for? Psychologists, I'm looking for a couple of those. Anything else that is kind of trying at this moment? I think everybody that uses EduClimber could still use some more help with that. I know Kath, or, um, Heidi spent um, three days in their, uh, their big national conference that was online. And um, so I haven't had a chance to talk to her how she thought that went. I don't know if anybody from your schools got to participate in that or not, but. Um, and Mo Molly, isn't Heidi planning a summer as you climb her? Yeah, day? I think she's wanting to do that too, to kind of sit down with schools and when they have more time to dig into it and, and so forth. So <clears throat> I'm hoping we can support you that way, Jim. Yeah, and I think you guys have, have been supporting the, the best you can. I just feel like there's just so much to it. Yeah. And, Would it be okay. beneficial if we had now that we've used it a year that same that guy come back and do another training, just kind of like deeper dive into it? Someone from the company. Maybe, maybe. I mean, right now any training is better than than nothing. I mean, it's oh, it, yeah. there's a lot there, and it's it's just that's a lot. And I think once we understand the tool, it's going to be an awesome tool. But right now it's it's just a really expensive tool that we don't know how to use. Well, and that's um, after having it a year, you have a lot more questions than you did when they first come and showed you how to use it. Correct. So, Correct. Um, I will visit and maybe um, talk to Heidi and see if we can't do something like that. And yeah, and I, I, I'm intending, like we're intending to send staff to the, um, to that training. It's on May 26th. Yeah, I we plan on that. going. Thank you. Um, all right, we'll see how Heidi feels. And if we need to bring in someone from, we can work on doing that too. I can't remember that guy's name. He talked really, really fast though. That could have been probably how we missed some of it. Um, anything else? Yes, the one thing I would say is I'm, I'm interested in what other districts are planning for assessment for the next school year. Um, I know with the change in, Moved to NSCAS growth. Um, are you going to continue to do a map test and NSCAS growth, or are we fully going to trust using the NSCAS growth written comparisons? I don't know. I'm just I'm interested in what other districts are going to do there. I'm also a little interested in what districts are doing with their pilot. If they did the pilot, what they're doing with their data, and I'm I'm hoping that state NDE and I've had talks with Jeremy about it creating a report that will give us class and grade level information so that we know what standards to really focus on instead of just at the student level. It's just really hard to break down that data right now. So I don't know if there's any other districts that have had success with them and what they're planning on doing with MAP for next year. And Quentin, you said you did talk to Jeremy? I did because I said... That Here's the deal. We got great yeah. results. I like how the results are here. I like the individual report that shows how kid did on each item and what level they or what level the question was at and whether they got it correct or wrong. I like that. But to me, it's missing the piece of classroom level or grade level data that would allow us to focus in on what standard do we really need to work on here this fourth quarter. And also would be helpful to be able to understand whether our curriculum is doing what our curriculum should be doing or our resources are on point or whether they're not on point. You know, if we already taught a certain standard, I'd wanna know if our kids are being successful with that, so. 
that's a big question for everyone, but I just didn't know what other people's thoughts were. Anybody have thoughts on that at this point? I was kind of in the same boat as you, Quentin. I'm just kind of waiting to see. Um, my intent for next year was to, for the seventh and eighth grade that are doing those NSCAS growth assessments, just to use those kind of as our primary assessment, kind of in, in lieu of the, of the uh, MAPS assessment. But I'm a little hesitant as well. I'm in that same boat. It's going to, are we going to get the same information? And it kind of changes our HAL policies too. And that's something I'm thinking about too, because all of our high ability learner stuff is based on scores or percentiles based on the map test is what we've used in the past. And so debating on whether we're all out abandoning map and just going to use NSCAS. And if that's the case, there's an NSCAS growth ELA test, which would be different than the current map reading and the map. A. So it's, two different tests and I'm unsure what comparison those RIT scores, those projected RIT scores. We, we, we did um, pilot, we piloted all of our kids just to kind of hopefully get some data that we can use. And we've been a little disappointed, I guess, on the data that we could put to work to make changes for before the next assessment, I guess. Anyone else have anything on testing? Or how about anything else? I'm concerned that um, with the change of those assessments coming down from the state, when you're looking at an external review, we were told in the past we wanted three good data sources to use for that triangulation of data. And when we change and shift some of those other assessments, what is the state looking for when we're we're trying to write goals and writing our action plan to meet those goals. How many data pieces do we have to have? Aaron, I don't know when I've been on teams, I've never seen an exact number of sources that just that you're looking at them and knowing that the whole state's in this boat, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that whatever team you have would be very understanding of that, but that you're using any data that you do collect um, to make those decisions. So if you have your Acadians, um, you have- This whole cycle has been non-consistent. Uh-huh. Yeah. Any NSCAS data right now is, is pretty hard to use. So, um, or I mean- you take it for what it is, but any kind of um, longevity data just doesn't work out there. So look at your ACT, look at, you know. Okay. I was a special ed teacher in my former career. I have great wait time. So if anybody needs more time, I'll give it to you. All right, one thing I wanted to just share, it just come across my email. Um, this is the last year that you can buy into the Canvas Consortium. And um, this is really small. I can't even read, I'll make it a little bit bigger here so I can. So um, NDE will pay for the implementation, which is about, I don't know, $2,500, something like that, I'm just guessing. You get a seat for $3 per user, and then um, you get support to um, impl or get it implemented to mesh it with your um, student assistant teams. And then there are a couple Canvas trainers throughout the state also that were part of this um, I don't even know if they called it a grant or this project initiative. So if you aren't, you've been thinking just so you have a timeline here that this will be um, the last time they'll take these on so that you're fully implemented by um, 2023. So
How many schools here are using Canvas? We're currently not at West Holt, but are there schools currently using it that really, really like it, that think we should jump on board or? We have quite a few teachers at the junior high, high school level that use Canvas, not at the elementary. Okay. Our high school. The ones that use yeah. it like it. Our high school uses it, Cody. Everybody does, and and Mr. Uh, Mr. Roggy really likes it from his end because, like, if a kid's sick, they can log in and get their get their work done. And you as you know as well as I do that a lot of that has to do with how motivated the kid is. But I mean, even if even if half the students are doing that, that in the long run helps out. And he also feels like it helps when there's subs in the building. And you know, we're coming up on that big time for subs with track and golf when they're gone all day. And the teachers really use it quite a bit up there. Neely Oakdale uses 4, 412 Canvas. Newman Grove is going to jump on this last um, for our high school teachers on this last um, load, I guess. We, we um, have a teacher that's teaching through Northeast, and she has to use it anyway. And it's just a good uh, turning point for our kids at that age. So we will be doing high school next year, seven through 12, actually. So. so what would the selling point be over, you know, a lot of our teachers are using Google Classroom right now. What's the, what's the major difference over something like that? The reason that we're doing that, because right now they are using Google Classroom. Um, we are going to switch to Canvas because I feel like classrooms, like just that introductory piece where they can get a general understanding of a LMS without getting too confusing so our third grade through sixth grade is going to continue to use classroom and then as they move towards the canvas part canvas is a little more involved as like they are going to see in college like if they go on to higher education it's a little bit more um lms than google classroom but google classroom is a good like jumping off point to get to there and i feel like we would be doing our high school kids moving on a disservice if we didn't get them into canvas and and understand how it works okay. cody another big thing is that it syncs with your um, student information system so all your classes are created when kids come and go that happens um, seamlessly yeah. hopefully um and grades can pass back and forth and stuff like that so that's that's a big plus there's more um options for teachers in canvas than there is in um google classroom okay yeah i was i've used like seven or eight different lms's throughout you know from when i taught in lexington and O'Neill and stuff so you know they're all kind of essentially the same thing but i just didn't know with canvas what the what the big selling point was for that three bucks a kid. And I know, you know, that implementation cost is a pretty big chunk going in there. So that's kind of a big benefit, but yeah. that's just what I was wondering schools that have transitioned over to it, what the big push was. Um, I kind of pulled our teachers and, and talked to them about it. And a majority of them were very satisfied with what they're currently using. So that was just, I was just kind of wondering what people that have switched over to it, what their thoughts were. Cody, it could be too that they're satisfied, but they don't know what's out there and beyond what they could be doing. So, yeah. you know, you could always get a demo too if you wanted or something, someone to show. Yep. Well, our high, we've got a couple of teachers teaching dual credit with Northeast and they're using it already. Um, and they were kind of in the same boat saying, well, you know, I already use it for these, but I don't know if it's a giant benefit for our seventh and eighth graders at this point. So. Yeah. And we've got a majority of our high school kids using that canvas through those couple teachers doing that. So they're already being exposed as far as that's concerned. But that's so what we're struggling with here at Boyd County too. We we on the implementation and some teachers are using Canvas and are still stuck in the Google Classroom world. Um, but it's really a battle for me of where to spend my time. Do I want to spend my time forcing them into the same? into the same area or is that a battle that I want to fight at this point um and so we're kind of wondering what we're going to do moving forward we're in a three-year contract so we have next year that we'll have canvas and our English are using it pretty heavily but I would say our math our IT our PE um, social studies is using more Google Classroom and so next year at this time will be it'll be an interesting discussion as to whether we want to continue to pay pay for it or stay in or stay out and I know that Canvas has um, 
made it a lot easier to basically everything that you did in Google Classroom to pull that in to your Canvas. So it's not like you're starting over. Um, they've kind of got a, I'm going to call it an integration with Google, and that's probably not the actual technical terms, but they have, because they have people saying, I've done all this and created all this in Google. So they've made it to where um, it's pretty, pretty slick to get that into your Google Classroom. All right, um, Marzano update. There's been a ton of talk about Marzano and, oh, was anybody else? Travis, you had your mic off. Did you want to say anything about Canvas? Oh, no. Tina pretty much hit upon what I was going to say. Uh, we made the switch just to prepare the students for, for their college, collegiate careers, I guess. And we have some, some teachers that are more heavily using it than others, but the goal was everybody to get on at least one class this year. And then next year, we'd be more immersed in it. So... No. Very good. You guys pretty much hit upon everything I was going to say. Thanks, Travis. Um, with the Marzano update, we've um, kind of reserved some dates and then they didn't work and um, just not really sure where we were going. And I know Newman Grove has done some work on um, trying to get some a trainer up here. So Monday, there was a superintendent's meeting. Um, and so you're welcome to pop on if you want. It's just a Zoom meeting. And we will have the um, ladies from Marzano on so that if we want to, we'll know immediately what dates are available if we want to, and we'll you know commit to it. So I feel like a middleman by the time I get back to them, they're like, oh, that date filled up. And then I'm like, so, so we're gonna try and hash it all out. Monday superintendent meeting. Um, so like I said, you're welcome. Just, uh, ask your superintendent to send you that link if you want to be on it or, um, visit with them afterwards. They, they should know more. We should have a date secured where what's available, all that after Monday is my hope. Molly, I do know as far as next August is concerned, um, Newman Grove is bringing Marzano in, but they told us they're limited to 50 people. So we have one other school that's looking to join us and that's as far as that'll get. So right. And Aaron, I, I will tell you, and I don't know who you're working with Marzano. Um, when I emailed Grace, she said, we don't have a 50 person cap. I'm like, I, I think um, the reason, well, and I don't know either who this guy is. Um, he said that the larger the group, the more um, speaker audience you get and not a lot of interaction. And so when you can keep the group smaller, they supposedly have some more interaction. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. So Dr. Warwick. That's who we want. And Dr. Warwick can facilitate pretty well a large group and very interactive. Um, that's who I originally had wanted because he had been out before. Um, but we'll see if he doesn't have dates that are available, it might have to be someone else. Jim, you've worked with others from Marzano. Do you have a uh, suggestion? Dr. Mike Rule is really good. He's engaging. Um, it wasn't that long ago that he was in a building. So he, sometimes those speakers can get a touch, a little out of touch if they've been out too long. And I don't think Dr. Warwick has at all. He was really good too. But those two, Dr. Warwick and Dr. Mike Rule. Is it R-U-L-E? Is it just like? R-U-R-U-Y-L-E. He, um, he was at, I want to say Gillette. Oh. in in Wyoming I think um so he's I mean even though Gillette's a bigger town he's used to rural so he kind of gets um where we're coming from in this neck of the woods he was really good our staff loved him okay that's good good information and I don't know if um Crystal's not on here yet okay because she I know that Madison has had different people come in too I didn't know if she had a suggestion Aaron, do you know who the name of your was that you got secured? No. Dr. Warwick, Dr. Phil, correct? I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 He's, a, he's, the, he's the one that did the ESU one training a couple of years ago and is very dynamic. And um, he did all of our ESU eight and he had a room of 300, 350 stuff I can't remember and he can work the room and have you be interactive and he's engaging so I yeah and knowing that there's Dr. Rule is very much um, that way too that's good to know 
they're implementing what they're teaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that'll happen on Monday. So we're gonna hash it all out and get it figured out. Um, so another thing, I know this was brought up at the um, principal data dig too, but we have our external review coming up and on Wednesday, March 23rd, we have a time slot from 1030 to 11 that the team um, would like to visit with principals from our area. It, it'll be a Zoom. Um, and so, number two register. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Claire's. Um, so, if you could, between that time, 10 30 and 11, I would love it if you'd let me know so that I know who to send the Zoom to. And um, so we at least have, we don't have an empty Zoom room when they get on. So we'll look at your schedules. Um, you can send me an email. You can let me know now and we can um, put your name in there or whatever, but it won't be a big, huge commitment, but we would love some um, principals to be a part of that. Anybody know now that it would work for them? If not, just let me know. It'll work for me, Molly. Okay. I'll do it. Yeah, oops. Is that Jim? Yep, sorry. That's okay. Can I add Cindy Johnson as well? Okay. And I might probably just send a Zoom to the whole group, but as long as I know there's gonna be a couple on there for sure, then I feel better. Claire, I will let you talk about New Teacher Academy. Okay, um, so I have taken over mid-year um, New Teacher Academy for Heidi, and um, just thinking about next year already seems crazy, but we have some tentative dates. If you click on that um, New Teacher Academy flyer link um, up top, you can see the actual flyer. We put some tentative dates in. Um, I'll be working with Katrina, so we have an elementary rep and a high school rep to um, really reach out to all those teachers and cover all the ground. And so big focuses for this upcoming year will be classroom management, you know, going in for fidelity checks and seeing that. I remember my first year teaching, classroom management is a huge piece and um, can really change the dynamic of a classroom with those skills and strategies in place. Um, we're currently going through cognitive coaching training. And so we're really seeing the benefits of cognitive coaching. And so our goal is to get out to these teachers um, more this next year and do more of that reflective piece, whether that's them recording themselves and then bringing it to our new teacher academy or us out there doing that cognitive coaching with them. And then we're still working on the mentor mentee teaming aspect of it and deciding how we want to um, do that, but they will have a mentor and we will work with the mentor and mentee to make sure they're getting something out of that rather than just saying, hey, this is your mentor, um, good luck. And then just that community and networking, you know, some of our schools are those one track schools and they might not know another second grade teacher to reach out to. And so hopefully through New Teacher Academy, we can do that community and networking and really get them connected with some others who might be at their grade level or someone they just really mesh with and get along with. So we will be meeting four times next year is the plan. And then um, I don't have the registration link up on our website yet, but we are tentatively looking at those dates unless I hear something from you guys saying those dates do not work. And actually um, most of them, they don't have an account. So the principals just let you know, or you do a Google registration. Oh, perfect. So email me. They, if you have they any have, right. They won't have accounts in our system. You, you, okay. we did that for you last year. So yeah, I yeah. wasn't quite here yet. So yeah. yeah. Email me if you have a new teacher already hired and, or need some. As you go forward. Yeah. Yep. And I will send this flyer out to all principals in the next week or so. Are there any questions? All right, anything else that um, you guys would like to visit about, ask, this is your time. I just wanted to open up too, if you have any questions about letters training, um, you've received some emails. We talked about it at the principal data dig 
Um, I've talked to your superintendents too. So I just wanna um, remind you that if you want me to come out to your district and you have like a whole elementary that you want to have trained in letters, either volume one or volume two, um, let me know, we can plan those days. If you're gonna send people, I do currently have a cohort of each of those volumes open on registration. Um, you know, so some of you um, don't have everybody participating in volume two, even though they did volume one or something like that. So that's open. Um, Neely Oakdale already has all their district dates booked for volume two next year. Um, so anyway, I just wondered if there are any questions that I could answer for anybody. Not right now, okay. All right, just be sure to shoot them my way if you um, have anything that comes up or just even wanna know what's in those volumes more, you know? Steph, I did have a teacher who is a volleyball coach that signed up. Mm -hmm. She's curious if she could do anything in the summer to get going so that during volleyball sure. season she doesn't fall behind. She emailed me. Um, she? Okay, yes. Good. And actually what's going to happen now, instead of us ordering training materials, I think you're going to order your own training materials because it is kept organized better that way. Was that correct, Molly, from what we understood last year? Yeah. Um, and so I said, um, you guys can set the start date then when you order those materials so that they'd have that online access. So that was great for her to kind of be thinking ahead and wanting to get some done this summer. Sure. Okay, so she could start her start date in like June 1st. So it'd run June 1st to June 1st instead of August 1st to August 1st or something like that. Perfect. I think you'll have to oh. set all your teachers on the same start oh. end date. I, yeah. I, think, I think that that, I don't think they'll go in and do individual ones, but. All the teachers from one school or all the teachers in the whole training? Just from your school. Okay, I think we can manage that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think that should be fine because they would have their last training by that time anyway. So it's just a 12 month access to the site. Tony, did you have anything you want to share about the behavior school or? I don't think so. Um, we're just happy to have kids in session and just remember if you do have a student on the radar, um, just reach out to me for observations and so that we can communicate because there's many things to do before you enroll them here. Even if you're thinking about next year, it will still probably, um, they will attend your homeschool first and then we'll do observations and go from there. Hey, Tony, I have a question real quick. Mm -hmm. um, in an IEP the other day, we had a parent, they just asked a lot of questions. And I didn't know the answer to this, you know, that we have kind of our um, high needs room uh, for students and they we were talking about summer services and they said, well, what about that school over in Clearwater? Do they help with summer services? Because we explained how we do ours and what we thought the student needed. And they thought maybe their kid needed more. And I said, well, I don't think that we can double dip services through the ESU and us. Yeah, you wouldn't be able service. to do that. Um, we do our services privately too. So any student on the IEP also has to have a early childhood or special education teacher service them. Okay. Or that's, SLP or whatever their service is. That's, that's what I assumed, but I also didn't want to assume and be wrong. So I no. thought I'd ask. Yeah, thank you. Thank and then- you. Um, that brings me to another point. So I have had a few parents reach out to me and what Ruth and I suggest is the decision to come to an alternative placement in the ESU needs to be an IEP team decision. So if they ever reach out to me, I will let the homeschool district know that they reached out to me and then it needs to start with you guys first, those conversations and then inviting us to the IEP. Okay, thank you. Yep. I just have um, one other thing, um, and I wasn't at the um, principal data dig, but one thing that as I was reading through everything and we were visiting, um, when it comes to mental health support, there was, uh, I hear more um, administrators talk about what's available for our teachers. Um, and I, like I said, I wasn't there. Does anybody have anything they wanna kind of clarify with that? Um, I. 
I don't know, is Travis still on? Travis, if you could, and maybe you um, don't have much to say about what Travis does, a, or Stuart does a great thing for their teachers through their LMHP. Um, and on Friday afternoons, it's only teacher consultation time. And so that could be um, about a student, about something personal or whatever, but it's only teacher consultation. And Travis, you want to add anything to that or how that you think that goes with your teachers? Oh, I think it's it's been a very good thing for the teachers that have chosen to do it. Um, it's obviously it's it's optional, and we have quite a few teachers that do take advantage of it, and they meet with Sonia. Um, she's very good when she comes on Tuesdays to meet with students, but uh, it's been good to have somebody for the the faculty as well because sometimes that gets overlooked. I think so. Some to think about uh, the the Zoom sessions have really worked out well, so we're appreciative that's that it's an option. Yeah, and so just letting you know that that's something. Um, and he said the Zoom session, and I think that's really um, how why it's been so successful. Because if she was in the school, she'd probably be pulled away for a student or something else, you know. But where it's just Zoom, they kind of sign it for a time slot. I don't know exactly how she does it, but that has really led to the success of of that. So. Um, there is that as a you know an option. Now let's say you um, uh, contract for two days of LMHP services. You know you have to decide amongst that how that will be used. If you want it all with student based, if you wanted some time, um, they're not opposed to if a teacher walks in and says, "Hey, you know I'm having trouble with this kid. Can you? What do you suggest?" They're totally good with that. But if you truly want it for, for teacher mental health, um, you need to kind of can we'll set that time um, with your LMHP? But besides that, are there other ways that they can help support or anybody? You know, I mean, what what kind of things are you needing to help support your your teachers? I, I think something that's pretty simple and easy to do is just give them some time to collaborate. I know yesterday we had a round, we had a round of instructional rounds, and the teachers that took part said it was just good to to get together to see somebody else and then just have time to, to visit and collaborate with what they witnessed and what they saw. So I think it, as simple as just giving them an hour to, to do something like that and then talk with their peers, because a lot of times there's no time to talk with your peers as, as many of you guys probably know. So that's a, an easy thing to do, I guess. Complete ditto with Travis, time is, is key. Travis, you did that within your um, own walls, but do you see a benefit of having a time when third grade teachers or, you know, could get together across some schools? Well, that's kind of like what we do with the, the service unit as far as the content area meetings. And that's something that's always really popular. You know, we used to do with the social studies when, when you yep. do that, I was a social studies teacher. That was always, you know, it was such a good day. I think anytime you can have collaboration across the service unit, that, that'd be a great thing, Molly. Um, it's just, teachers days are so hectic there's always they're going from one thing to the next so if you can build time in that's great I know this morning I know Mrs. Reha asked about getting together with the MTSS group just giving them an afternoon so they can work on that because we did that or I did that last year for them so just getting a sub for the, for the people and giving them two or three hours to work through some things is key because then they're not doing it after school they're not doing it at night I mean you're kind of showing that you value what they're doing and you're building it into the schedule so I guess just finding a way to let them do it at school and help them out a little bit is what I would say. Any other thoughts? I would say another thing that I think is valuable is if your teachers have been through day one of MAT training. Um, if you're not familiar, but it really talks about um, de-escalation and how to handle situations in the classroom. And I know it's coming from a different angle, but it alleviates a lot of that stress um, because they give them some great strategies on how to, um, I don't know, manage those behaviors within the classroom, I guess. And so um, that's something too. Sometimes schools think that's just for your special ed, but it's really beneficial for all teachers. And Tony, you're a trainer. You might add to what that day one looks like. Yeah, day one is based off of 
the strategies to prevent a kid from getting to the escalation stage. So what can you do before they get physical? And then day two is how to safely put a student in a proper hold. Um, and we definitely see benefits to this. Um, if you are having a lot more issues with students behaviorally, this is a good training. Um, it is a pretty lengthy training, about seven to eight hours for both days. Um, Tracy Booth and I are trainers, um, and if you're interested this summer, reach out to us now so we can get those dates on our calendar or in the school year. It's a little harder because we're both here in school, but we could maybe um, fit in a few days and get some subs. And you, can do, just, you can do just day one. You don't have to do the physical restraint of day two, or you could just have maybe a lot of special ed teachers definitely Correct. go to type of a thing. Yep, um, and then day one is 20 people per one person, and then day two is 10 per one trainer. So that's the amount of people that we can do. Tony, do we um, have to set those dates up with you on our own or will you be putting some dates out there? Um, you just set them up on your own just because the quantities are so limited that usually we can't do many schools altogether. We probably will do another one like we did this year. We did one during the school year um, and that I seemed need to well send attended. People, so I need to pay attention to that. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just want a few people. Yeah, we'll have one probably during the school year. Maybe we can fit in two. Erin, I would have you communicate with Tony how many you have and what they need, and then she'll know that so that if okay. she has some openings and a training, she can let you know. Okay, I can do that. Thanks. Yeah. Anything else anyone wants to talk about? If anyone's interested, I've been doing this. Um, it's through the NAESP. Uh, preschool through third grade uh, leadership academy and um, just focusing on how you start with your children in preschool and uh, develop that curriculum throughout the school years to third grade. And um, there's been some really good information and you end with a capstone project at the end, but they're uh, accepting applications for next year and just asked us to um, share that information with other principals if you're interested. So if they are interested, they just contact you, Cindy, and you'll get them that info. Yeah, and it's through the NAE um, SP. Yeah, okay, I captured that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, well, I will not keep you unless anyone has anything else. We will um, have one more on April 13th. Is there anything in particular you're like, we really should hear from this person coming up at the end of the year? I mean, do you want um, on testing again or assessment, see where they're at, or is there anything else? Nope, nothing. Well, please let me know because I would be happy to try and arrange those. But um, other than that, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. Um, hopefully some of you have some spring breaks coming up and you can enjoy a little time off. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. See you guys.